You're tuning in to the Black Hollywood Live Network, featuring news, interviews, and commentary on all things Black Hollywood. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is Black Hollywood Live. Next, featuring intimate and in-depth interviews with Black Hollywood's next edition of Stars and Influencers. Black Hollywood Live. Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host for Black Hollywood Live, next... So today, you guys, we are here for Black Hollywood Live next, talking to, of course, the biggest and up and coming people in Hollywood that you need to know. So today is no difference. This song is playing right now because we have a special guest who is quite the player on his <laughs> song, on his show, Owns If Loving You Is Wrong. It's one of Tyler Perry's biggest mm -hmm. sitcoms out right now. And I'm your host, Courtney Tesno. Keep in touch with me at Tesnos on Twitter and Instagram. I'm joined by my lovely co host. What's up? I'm Justin Hart, and you guys can find me on Twitter at It's Me J Hart. All right, and our player for today, <laughs> like we said, he's on Tyler Perry's If Loving You Is Wrong. You can catch it every Tuesday, 9, 8 Central on OWN. We are here with Randall, but we're really with Eltony Williams. <laughs> how are you doing hey, today? How are you guys doing today? Welcome, welcome. So you have a lot of um, explaining to do <laughs> <laughs> from, <laughs> from the Eltony side as opposed to Randall, because Randall has screwed you up. Now, Randall has ruined it for me. <laughs> I can't get a date. Don't nobody, don't nobody trust me. <laughs> so funny. So for any of our BHL fans out there, use the hashtag BHL next to keep the conversation going with us and let us know what you're thinking about Elton as he explains himself. Mm -hmm. Because if you've seen <laughs> Owns if loving you is wrong. You know that his character is. You've got some explaining to do. You've got some explaining to do. You've got some explaining to do. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and play an icebreaker with you that actually kind of goes with your character. It's mm -hmm. do you know right or wrong? Okay. All right. So the first couple are a little easy. Okay. I'll go first. You can go after. All right. Um. So is it deep dish or thin crust? Deep dish. Of course. Chicago. Chicago. Come on. All now. right. So is it mild sauce or ketchup? Mild sauce. Okay, you got that one right there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> was it right or wrong? No, yeah, I got yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, um, okay. Do you pay on the first date or go Dutch? You pay on the first date. Okay. Yeah. Right, so do you sneak out the house or do you tell your parents? Where are you going? Uh, <laughs> you <gotta tell> <laughs> <us> <laughs> that. Back in the day. Right, right, right. Back right. right. You tell your parents. I was uh, a good okay. kid. I was a good oh, kid. Okay. I know. All right. right. Do you forward her a good morning text or do you call her? You call. Okay. You're, I mean, you're getting all the easy. Yeah. All, all, right. Right. <laughs> all right, it's a little tough question. So, do you bring your old girl around your new girl? No. Why? Do why? You? <laughs> why, would, why would you do that? Is that a real question? <laughs> yeah, people do that. I mean, you know what? People if you're friends, if it, are you friends with your old girl? You know, never know what the situation may do be. Do you bring your old girl around your new girl? Yes. No, because even if, uh, in my experience, even if they pretend like they're gonna be cool with it. Never. One of them is not going to be cool with it. They're probably both not going to be cool with it. But, or they you know, probably set you up. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, you make it to talk in, and then someone's, no, you know, just just don't set yourself up for failure. Yeah. Exactly. You don't do that. This next one is okay. another setup. So do you respond or block your ex? <sighs> you respond. You respond. You? I mean, no, here's the thing. It depends on it depends on the breakup. You yeah. know like how it was. Like if it was, uh, you know, if it was, if you guys are still kind of friendly. Okay. You don't want to start any new drama by being like you blocked me. I had something important to tell you. You mm -hmm. know, my, you know, my my, uh, my grandmother passed away. We wanted you at the funeral. You know, something like that. Okay. You know, you don't want to mm -hmm. block them. I mean, something important. Mm -hmm. well, she can say it on Facebook. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna say whether that's a right or wrong answer. You did kind of say it's circumstance. Yeah, the circumstance. So you know, you, know, yeah. you might be like, all right, don't you know, hit me up at <laughs> after you know, 10 p.m. You know? No. But. All right. So last question: Do you sag or do you flood your pants? <laughs> if, if if those are the choices, you, you sag. You don't, really? you, don't, you don't want flood. No. Really? We say we sag what like like to half half butt. Yeah, half butt. If you have some nice I, nice underwear I'm on. I'm about to say, yeah, you sag versus flood. You never flood. Oh, okay. you know, oh sorry. I, 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 I don't think I'm going to I'm not I'm not flooding my pants today, but no, in college, like my friends used to always say, like, Justin, you need to stop flooding your pants. Right. Because the thing is like I am not a fan of sagging. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, I'm not a fan of sagging either. You know, I I'm just, I'm just get some pants to fit. Yeah. But yeah. uh <laughs> But you know what? If you flood, you can kind of pull off the whole crop look, the crop pant look. See for you young folks. 
you know, <laughs> y'all can do that. My day, you don't walk around flooding for my day. Right? No, no. <laughs> but, uh, okay, I remember your day. Right? <laughs> no, it was like, um, I'm like, all right, if you're walking around and, mm-hmm. and the flood comes like just at the ankle where you can't really tell, yeah. that's different. Then you just try not to sit down. If you don't sit, you know, if you don't then sit they down, won't know. Then they you won't can't know. tell it's a flood, so you can, you know, you can half, you know, halfway, <laughs> okay. half, half okay. going both. I get it, I get you it. Know. Okay, so let's get into some casting news. Mm-hmm. So Janelle Monae is actually going to be in her first, I believe, her first film called Moonlight. Oh, nice. And she's going to be starring next to Naomi Harris mm-hmm. and a few other people. So I'm really excited to see how she transfers mm-hmm. from being a singer to an actress mm-hmm. on the big screen. What mm-hmm. are we thinking about this new endeavor of hers? I mean. I think anytime you know an artist um, has several different passions mm-hmm. and several different talents, you know if you if you can put your hands in all yeah. of them and explore them, do it. Why not? Don't, yeah. don't why, why put yourself in a, in a box? Yeah, somewhere. You know? And actually, I think it's long overdue because mm-hmm. she's already proven herself musically, and that yeah. she you know she's a musical goddess. And actually, she grew up in New York and she um, studied drama. Right. Oh, it makes so sense. She so studied drama, so you know now we get a chance to see like this you know different side to her. So I feel like she's probably gonna kill it. Yeah. No, exactly. Yeah. I mean. I mean. Um, I was really uh, fast back in, in high school, and you know, uh, so I mean, if the if the, if the Bears want to pick me up, you know, as a running back, you yeah. know, I have different talents, yeah. so maybe I could help out there. They could <laughs> maybe use he's me. Really, he's, he's really pushing it. <laughs> I'm just saying, I still got it. I still got to put me in, coach. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so you guys know there's been a lot of comebacks for Fresh Beats mm-hmm. today. We're going to talk about not Adele because I know you heard Adele uh-huh. song, right? Okay, mm-hmm. if you didn't hear Adele, then where have oh, you been? Oh my God, that <laughs> song is amazing. Yeah, yes. she killed it. Absolutely amazing. amazing. But someone I've been excited to see come back is Missy Elliott. Oh, yes. Right when I said it, Missy Elliott dropped this little snippet that we're about to hear, and I'm like, oh, Missy's back! (laughs) I spoke this into existence. I know, I know. Okay, so let's go ahead and listen to this sneak peek she gave us. WTF, but it's where they from. Yeah, I'm bad at, from. Uh, I'm bad mm-hmm. at slang. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Where but they from? Okay, like we're missing some. I know we are missing a few little words. And this is the song she's doing with uh, Pharrell. Pharrell. She's okay. doing it with Pharrell, which I'm excited to hear. I kind of hear a little bit of Pharrell in yeah, that yeah, beat. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. That's hot. That's hot. No, yes. I don't know where Missy. Missy, I don't know why she oh ever God. left. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, she just hit after hit. I yes. would bump Missy anytime, any day, any place. Yes. For sure. I'm excited because she brings something new to hip hop and to like funk music. Right. So I'm just glad to see that she's finally back on the track that we can have something to dance to. Exactly. You know, and her music isn't like, you know, provocative or anything like that. It's something fun. It's like you have to like read in between the lines to kind of get what she's saying. Right, Mm -hmm. right, right. You know? I didn't hear many words in that song, but I'm still like, (laughs) bye. She can say the alphabet and it's still going to be a hit song. Right, right. (laughs) 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 Do the the dictionary? Right. (laughs) Missy. Missy just has it, so I saw. A, well, I saw like a snip of snippet of her doing mm-hmm. some behind the scenes for her music video, uh, and we know that she always kills it uh, in the music yes. video department. So I'm excited to see awesome. that she still is yeah. creative with it. And to see well, like what dance moves are probably gonna you know blossom from right. that. Mm-hmm. She still kills it. Yeah. I actually uh, was able to meet Missy Elliott when I was a. Uh, like 18 or something like that. My cousin won some radio contest mm-hmm. to go to party at Missy Ellie's house yeah. in, oh, in Miami. I'm um, pretty sure it wasn't her house, but, <laughs> but we, were, <laughs> we were there and then she came in and signed some some autographs and yeah. then left. But I was like, hey, nice to meet you, I love you, and then she left. But uh, it was, <laughs> we got a free trip to Miami, so right. it, was, it was a good That's time. That's nice, you can't beat yeah. that. <laughs> right? All right, so what's the next big thing? All right, the next big thing, and actually, um, Eltina, this is for the fellas. Yeah. So each season, I'm always searching for, you know, what's trending and what's popular in men's fashion. And I'm super excited about this new piece because as we're entering the fall and the winter season, you know, this item is definitely something that we need. Mm-hmm. It's an over-the-shoulder, oversized um, sweater that's been worn by the legend himself, Mr. Ah. Kanye West. Ah. So, and one thing that, you know, that's amazing about this piece is that now, as you guys can see, my headphones are all <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you get excited, you got excited. Like, like, I know, I know, I gotta tell about you. This. So no, one thing I like about this piece is that now you can purchase this at one of my favorite clothing stores, H&M, for ah. $29.99. What? 
Like you can't beat that. Like you can't. I'm like, like what do you think? Do you see yourself wearing something like oh, that? I can rock that. I can definitely rock that. Yeah. Especially for twenty nine ninety nine. I'll rock I'll that exactly. in several different colors. And one thing I do like about this piece <laughs> is that you know you can rock it in many different ways. Right. Like you can dress it up with some slacks and dress shoes, right. or you can dress it down like Kanye and throw some jeans and you know some Yeezys on if you balling yeah. like that. Oh, but some you know, Yeezys. right? <laughs> and even for the ladies, you know, oh, I don't want to leave you hanging. But I know a lot oh, of times I would rock it over. Yeah. Right. And I was thinking like, because I know a lot of ladies they like to sleep in those extra long t-shirts right. so it's something you know that can keep you kind of warm right. inside your place and you know something you can lounge around in so if your lady comes over and she's cold and stuff, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. basically it's a t-shirt that you're <laughs> not gonna get back right um, here you can have this sweater for $29.99 <laughs> so I can get another one I- I'm you, telling you you take that home so it's definitely a good find so I would definitely yeah. encourage all who's into like the oversized you know sweaters to definitely purchase that I like it all all right. Right. You, see, you seem like a guy who's right. in the fashion so I'm gonna trust you hey chill out man chill out chill out <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and get to know you. We talked a yeah. little earlier about you being from Chicago, yeah. but we need to know what it was like being raised in the Windy City. Uh-huh. Uh, well, I mean, yes, Chicago is, I mean, mm-hmm. no offense to anybody else and anybody else's city, but it's the best city on earth. Okay. You know, uh, I mean, it's just, <laughs> just a great eclectic mix of all different types of people. Yeah. Um, it is very cold. Everybody knows that. It's, mm-hmm. a, it's, it's a different type of cold than anybody from the East Coast. You guys like, you know, like to claim you know yeah. cold. You do. You do. It's not that Chicago cold. That oh, hawk, no, I've been. That hawk swoops in and gets you. Yeah. It kills you to your bones. You're like, I'm wearing so many clothes. Why am I still cold? Wow. Oh, my god. But, uh, yeah, it's just... It's, it's, awesome city to, to you know to have grown up in yeah you know I, I feel like I got a mix of like just a bunch of just different cultures and just mm-hmm. just ex- exposed to a lot of different things a lot of different people and uh yeah I mean it's a great place to raise your kids I say okay yeah. well I don't know about the raising your kids hey. I love warm weather oh, <laughs> so, <laughs> you're like you me. <laughs> discouraged me from that but what was the pivotal moment um during your childhood when you realized you wanted to pursue acting yeah, I think as a as a kid, I was always that you know, uh, watching cartoons and things like that. I you know, doing all the voices, running around, jumping off things, yeah. like acting out Thundercats and different things I saw mm-hmm. as a kid. You know, <laughs> so um, I, I always wanted to do that. Um, and then just I went to high school for in high school, I did a lot of plays and things like that. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Went to college for it. And I just decided, you know, I, feel like I might be able to make a little career out of this. You know, it's, it seems fun. You know, I, I could be a psychologist or I could do this and psychologist. So you considered nice. psychology? Yeah, at yeah point. I was, really? I was, I was, I was, I was like, well, what do I go to college for? Acting or psychology? You know. You know. Okay. Yeah, All, same this, situation. Study, study human behavior. You yeah. Know, kind of both ways. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so decided that, and then I was like, you know what? It was a, uh, it was either now or never. So I just. Hopped on, you know, hopped on in the car with a roommate and drove out here. Nice. Wow, yeah. took that leap. Leap with faith, yeah. I did. Wonderful. All right, so growing up, your dad served in the U.S. with the U.S. Marines, mm-hmm. right? So, were you a military brat? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> 20, <laughs> twenty-three so years. Yeah, my dad uh, was yeah. in the uh, uh, Marines for twenty-three years. Yeah, retired as a master sergeant. Oh, okay, so since you were a military brat, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna go off the brat part. <laughs> um, you were actually the youngest of three children. Yeah. Were you? Did you have that younger child syndrome? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Well, I don't know if I think you know, I was definitely the baby. Okay. I was de- yeah, I was definitely the baby. I was so, soaked up the, the attention in that way. Okay. You know, I was, uh, <laughs> I was, you know, I was, I was quiet and loud at the same time. Like, you know, in some social situations, I, I, I kind of sit back and just kind of take everything in, the little, you know, smart little bookworm type kid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then, you know, I'd, I'd get, get crazy and wild and go sing in the corner or, you know, act out and yell or something like that. So... Yeah, nice. I, was, uh, okay. I was definitely the baby, though. Okay. Yeah. I'm the youngest, too, so I can definitely, you know, yeah. relate with that. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, both of you guys. Mama, mama's baby, you <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the mama, texting me right now? <laughs> I'm going to be right back. I got to get this. Okay? <laughs> Goodness. Okay, so since you, uh, since you were the youngest and you said you wanted to pursue psychology at one point, were your mm-hmm. parents really supportive of that decision um, to not pursue it anymore? W- yeah, well, yes and no. My parents are very, very, very supportive, mm-hmm. but also very realistic, you okay. know. Um, my mom especially. Um, I was going to go into to law. I was going to go into a lot of different things, but yeah. law is where I thought uh, I would go into also. Um, so after college, mom was like, "Okay, yeah, you can, you know, do the do the acting thing and uh, supportive of whatever you want to do." But also, you also have a passion for law. Yeah, maybe you should think about that <laughs> because uh, that pays. <laughs> and uh, acting sometimes doesn't, you know. Yeah. But uh, but she was, yeah, very, very supportive of, of my decision, you know, whatever I wanted to do. Wow. And, and just kind of just nurture it and be like, all right, you know, if you're going to do this, then you're going to do it. And you'll know, be the best at it you can be. And mm-hmm. uh, you'll be successful because 
you know, she believed, definitely believed in my talent and, and my, my dad and my family, all of them did. So uh, it, it worked out. So, yeah, they're very supportive of whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. Wow. So you kind of switched gears on us. Yeah. Um, like, was it in college when you went to Northwestern? Yeah, uh, no- Northern. 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 Okay, Northern. you went to Northern. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you actually decide, I'm just going to go pursue this? Because you definitely seemed like you were kind of mm-hmm. yeah. tittling. Yeah, on I mean, I, I'd already decided that as a major, like right before college, that acting was my thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But while I was in there, I was like, well, you know, I could, I could be an actor and a lawyer. Yeah, yeah, really? that, that's a thing. That's a thing, you know. <laughs> because if you get that role thing. where you have to play a lawyer, you can incorporate your acting exactly. skills. Exactly. So, so you think about all yeah. that. Like I, I, I could do both. I mean, I'll mm-hmm. get the law degree, but then I'll act and you know mm-hmm. all that. But then it was just finally like, um, at least for, for myself, people have their own different paths. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I was like, you know what? Acting is where my passion is. That's where my talent is. Um, that's where I feel like the Lord's leading me. So let me go ahead and jump on that and, <laughs> and, and, and trust it. Trust this. Take this leap of faith. Good. Well, yeah. Speaking of acting, um, I know you said you've been inspired by you know several actors such as Angela Bassett and Sidney Poitier. Mm-hmm. I like pronouncing his name like that. It's really fancy. Poitier. <laughs> Poitier. Poitier. So what is it about them that you know that makes them remarkable actors, and how did they inspire, inspire you to become an actor? Yeah. Um. I mean, it's, it, there is a certain level of just just, just class and sophistication mm-hmm. which um, both of them in particular yes. always carry. You know, mm-hmm. um, on and off the screen. From what I understand, um, I was able to play. Um, uh, my friend Mohammed Ojari wrote um, this play called uh, Greenwood 1964, mm-hmm. which um, is about um, uh, Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte, and it's a, a, a meeting that they and a mm-hmm. trip they actually took. Okay. Uh, and I was able to play Sidney Poitier in it, and it was just just probably one of the, one of the best roles I've ever wow. ever done. You know, and it, one of the most intimidating roles, of course. You're trying to play play <laughs> Sidney Poitier, yeah. play the <laughs> man. You know, uh, um, but it, it was um, just incredible and crazy to be able to be able to try to embody someone like that who mm-hmm. I just have such an, a crazy, amazing amount of respect for. Um, and um, it, was, it was a fun role, and it just kind of every day you as an actor, you it's good to have someone that you look up to. And try to you know I want to emulate when you try to f- start to fall off you're like you know what I want to emulate you know yeah. this the life that this person has led so uh, yeah. You know. And then nice. you um, you actually went ahead and performed during your theater days at Chicago's I can't even pronounce it well Steppen, Steppen, Steppen Steppenwolf Wolf Theater. Steppen Wolf theater you, so yeah. you performed there mm-hmm. and I want to know when you left after your first uh, performance mm-hmm. what did you p- take from that performance that you're still using now? Yeah you know that um, I was able to. to Get cast in that show right out of uh, actually I think I was still in college and got a, a lead on the seventh stage which was uh, you know which was just a crazy honor um, but um, to be able to play that the character where he was um, it comes back to to the like with Sidney Poitier having having mm-hmm. that kind of you know that command over mm-hmm. a character and the stage presence and just knowing that um, and whatever you do you you just, you just be the best at it. And so, you know, and so I am able to do that and just, I was so intimidated, you know, as a 21 year old kid Mm -hmm. playing, getting the lead role at at Steppenwolf. I was like, I don't know if I belong here with all all (laughs) these big dogs, you know, but uh, I was able to do it and just know that, you know, there's nothing too big, there's nothing too big for me, you Mm -hmm. know, if it's what I'm meant to to do or I'm meant to be, you're you're here for a reason. Oh, yeah. So, you know, um, even like with with, uh, the show here with uh, If Loving You Is Wrong. It's like it's a big undertaking. You're like, oh man, am I, am I up to the challenge? Mm-hmm. But just being able to know, you know, I've done this before. I, I am up to the challenge. I'm meant to be here, and it's a uh, it's a blessing. And uh, let's do it. You, you rise to it. Man. Yeah. Well, you know, tomorrow's Halloween, and <laughs> <laughs> I know my girl Courtney's kind of you know scared mm. of horror Uh-oh. films. But no. in 2006, you actually starred in a horror film. The Whaler? <laughs> <laughs> the Whaler, right? Yeah, All right. yeah, yeah. So how did you prep for yeah. that? <laughs> you sips, gotta, sips water. Mm-hmm. Sips water, okay, uh-oh. This is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Regular H2O. So tell us about that film, like, you know, how did you prep for it? How was your experience, you know, working in that film? Um, well, uh, yeah, The Whaler was a, it was a funny one. It was a, you know, kind of very kind of low budget uh, horror film. Um, it was, <laughs> we initially, when they, when they cast us, uh, they told us we were going to be going to uh, Puerto Vallarta to mm-hmm. shoot. And I was really excited. Man, man I you just got out here from L.A. I just got out to L.A. Uh, we're going to fly to Puerto Vallarta, shoot for eight, ten days. Yeah. Like, this amazing free trip. The day before we were supposed to fly out, they called. And they were like, okay, um, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> we're in <laughs> some wonder Puerto Vallarta. We are going to do film in my backyard in Van Nuys. So, whoa, 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 whoa. 
Wait, wait, seriously? <laughs> How did that yeah. change the whole production? It, 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 was, uh, it was a shock to all of us. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm assuming this is like a mansion or something with a, a really huge backyard. No, like, no. Not not a mansion, not a mansion. But uh, I mean, a good fine size backyard. And honestly, they did they did yeah. a really good job with it. They you know they they, they made, transformed. They it. worked it out. It looked like a, a cabin okay. a cabin in Puerto Vallarta. Like they yeah. they worked it out, and it was actually uh, I was actually pretty impressed by how they were still able to make it work. <laughs> but I was unimpressed by the fact that I didn't get to go to Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, <laughs> I'm know? sure. But uh, yeah. you know, it was cool to uh, to you know um, you know prepping for that. That was my, my yeah. first. First, uh, I hadn't done any TV at that point, mm -hmm. and so it was, it was my first movie. So I'm still good, really good friends with a lot of the, the cast there. You know, we wow. still you know hang out and keep in touch and things like that. So it was I'm sure you joke a lot about that. Oh <laughs> man, we wrote them so hard. <laughs> so would you yeah. ever do a horror, another like horror film? Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I know you're afraid you're afraid of horror, but I actually you know. I was like, this is all right. We're gonna go together. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna right. go to support. <laughs> you're gonna I, support. Might, I might cover my ears a bit, but right, I'm okay. support. Right? <laughs> Jumping, grabbing on the people. No, I've, uh, yeah, no. I've, I, it's a it's a fun genre. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm more into like the the suspense thrillers and or yeah. the. Um, not so much the, the the gory, just you know, mm -hmm. gratuitous, you know, all that. But uh, but yeah, no, I, I think it can be if they're if they're well done. I, yeah. you know, I like a little good horror movie. I'd do one. Okay, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> now you talked a little bit about your Halloween possible costume. Uh -huh. So would you actually ever want to play a superhero? And if so, would you, what which one would it be? That's all I've ever wanted. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd love that. Yeah. Um, uh, that, I think that started the whole acting thing for me. I'd lo yeah, I'd love to play a superhero. Um, Were you into the comics as well? Yeah, my, my cousin oh, was big into it, and mm -hmm. then I, and I and I was like, oh, well, what's that? What's that? Oh, who's this? Let me borrow these. You know, <laughs> I started, started getting some myself. So yeah, I grew up watching X Men and things like that. So yeah, I was a bit, yeah big in the comics and superhero stuff. Pretty much wow. every year for Halloween, I'm like, which superhero can I be this year? But then I procrastinate to the day Last before, minute. and I'm like, oh, I can't be any of them because they take a lot of work. So oh I mean, goodness. you could have got like a bed sheet and you know tied it around your neck. You could have been like, you know, Superman from the hood. <laughs> Bootlegs, bl 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 blank I'm man. Just, yeah, you can <laughs> be blank <laughs> man. You know, hey. You can, no, you can't do it. no, there are too many stores to right. get costumes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna be talking. About, I saw Randall from If Loving You Is Wrong walking around with the bootleg <laughs> superhero costume. <laughs> oh, gotta set a trend. Oh my goodness. You do it, you gotta do it. Right? <laughs> you gotta do it big, exactly. <laughs> now your your character Randall, oh my goodness, you bring yeah. the drama and the scandal to yes. this entire series. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, before we get into your experience, mm -hmm. how in the world do you do a do a character like that when I feel you're completely opposite? <laughs> Man, me and Randall are just our worlds apart, 180 mm -hmm. degrees. Yeah, yeah he. Uh, this dude, I mean, I, I like to think of myself as a pretty uh, normal guy, you know, mm -hmm. I like to joke around. And he, Randall is 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 a is crazy. <laughs> he is a fool. Um, but that's what makes him so fun to play. Mm -hmm. You know, he's yeah. uh, just so different from myself. So it gets a completely like just delve into this guy, and um, you know, there's no there's no Elton in him. It's all about him and his crazy world and mm -hmm. the way he thinks and when he looks um, at, at, at Alex and he the thoughts he has and just Oof. what you know what makes him give those looks what makes him just uh, you mm -hmm. know and what, and what is he thinking it, it's, it's like kind of you know he's, he's a little little psychopath in him and uh but it's so fun to play. So mm. fun to play. I wouldn't have yeah. a character any other way. But tell us, um, how, like, what does that, you know, stem from? Like, how did you prepare for this character? Because, like I said, you're the complete opposite right. of what, you know, Randall is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't know where it came from. Um, I remember um, reading the script um, on the first episodes, you know, we had a table read, mm -hmm. and uh, just reading the character, and I think I was doing maybe a certain way, then uh, talked to Tyler about it while we were trying to figure out what's this guy like, and he told me, he's like, this character is a cunning snake. I'm like, okay, okay, I like those words. I like that <laughs> word. He's a villain. Okay, he's a little villain. And I'm all right. And then from there, I just kind of started creating. All right, well, he, you know, he's obsessed with his neighbor. You know, mm -hmm. um, but he loves her. But there's these all these different things. I start to just layer them in. And then um, honestly, I think I remember one day. <laughs> I remember when I was, I was trying to prepare for him. Like, because he's, he's a difficult character. Yeah. And I was walking around the gym in Atlanta one day where no one know, knows me. And, <laughs> and I swear I was just walking around like. Looking at people on the side like this. I, mean, oh, I, don't, I, don't, no. I hope I wasn't, but I, I swear I was. I was like, I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was in the zone. I was just trying to think about the character, and I think yeah. I was just doing it. And I caught myself in the mirror. I was like, oh, what was what was that thing? I was like, that's interesting. I bet you wow. had a few and people staring at you, like, <laughs> like what's going on? Oh, with you this don't guy? Quit looking at me like that. <laughs> but I, th I think I think from there, I was like, oh, okay, okay, and start using that as the character, and then yeah. it just developed into what it is now. 
Okay, yeah. I actually want to talk about the beginning of the episode that I saw with you crying. How in the world did you c- incorporate so many different types of ugly cries? <laughs> <laughs> From uh, childhood. <laughs> from childhood crying ugly all my life. <laughs> all my life. No, um, yeah, he's a, I think um, if you've watched um, any of the other previous episodes, he's just, uh, Randall, he goes for it. Like, he, there's, mm-hmm. you know, he has zero chill, right? No yeah. chill. So I think, um, you know, he walks in, sees his wife and his ex-best friend, having sex in his shed mm-hmm. you know his sacred place um yeah oh my god <laughs> he, um, oh, you, this type of uh, when someone's when someone's crazy i imagine they you know they don't think like everyone else yeah you know, someone else might be like oh okay you know <laughs> that's horrible yeah. but he, he just goes over the top and just loses it and it, it breaks his foundation of, of how you know how he sees himself mm-hmm. it's just layered with so many mm-hmm. uh, you know he's a he's a psychologist in the show but a psycho psychologist so you know it's <laughs> pretty much <laughs> the emphasis on the psycho so um i think yes i think he just it breaks him down and then <laughs> all the, the the face just happened you know <laughs> <laughs> oh i have my ugly cry i think we all do right i definitely do yeah. okay good, good, good. I, I, like, I know I you're do. not alone no, right seriously. right <laughs> you did a great job with that i, I wanted, wanted to talk about um actually having tyler Perry is someone. What mm-hmm. is he? What advice has he given you while working for him? Yeah, you know, uh, um, and Tyler. I mean, it's great working with him. He's just, he's just, just a really, just a good guy. He's a genuine good guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the whole cast, like you know, he, he he cast really good people. We all get along so well. It's it's, it's weird. It's it's a uh, it's really like a, like a family there. Like Aww. I know people say mm-hmm. that. I know people say that, but like we all just hang out. Like I just went to the wedding of my of uh, Alex uh, in the show, mm-hmm. uh, um, Amanda. Uh, went to her, her wedding and I'm really good friends with her real life husband now <laughs> really good oh, friends good. With her. and uh, Marcy from the show she came Heather Hemmings and everybody so um, um, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> what is the advice that Tyler Perry so has Ty- given yeah, you Tyler's that stuck <laughs> with you? it's okay <laughs> so but yeah but so Tyler is just like um, he, he always talks about how he came in through this business and through Hollywood like um, he didn't go in the, the normal way. Mm-hmm. You know, he created his own path. He did. And he was saying, like, don't don't sit around and wait for somebody else to say, okay, we accept you. Okay, we bring you in. Okay, we'll make your, your projects. You know, you do, you do it yourself. You know, you go out there. There's so many opportunities, mm-hmm. especially nowadays. There's so many opportunities, you know. Um, so I, th- I think that, that really sticks with me. Like, don't sit around and wait for somebody else to give you permission. Mm-hmm. You know, you go and do it yourself. And I think that's just, just great advice. Wonderful. Now, we know this show is um, airing on Oprah's Network. So mm-hmm. have you like have you met her before? You know, what was your first encounter? Because yeah. I think I came across a post on your Instagram. Yeah. And you said you said something funny, but you didn't remember what exactly <laughs> I have no idea what it was. <laughs> I mean, you're in the presence of Oprah. I'm like, uh, and I'm sure some stupid thing came out. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I just looked at the picture, and I'm like, yeah, she was cracking up. And I must have said something funny because she's looking at me. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I met Oprah a, a few times now, and she's just that. She's I mean, she's she's a queen. She, I oh, mean, yeah. she she really is, and, and just and just the, just the way she comes across, she, she's very um, the, the person you, you've seen for years mm-hmm. is the person she is. Like mm-hmm. you know, she's just very warm, and um, mm-hmm. I uh, you know, I didn't I didn't want to bother her the most recent time I, I saw her, you know, because everybody wants to talk to her, and I didn't want to bother. Her, so I was just kind of walking by, and she like turned and looked at me, and was like, hey, and like called me over, and like gave wow. me a big hug That's and stuff, beautiful. and I was like, man, like uh, it was she just 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 a warm, just a. Just, yeah, just, she's a queen. She's a goddess, really. Amazing. Yeah. Just a really quick question, because I know you guys film um, on the same studio a lot with the other with other um, Tyler Perry shows, like the haves and the have-nots. Mm-hmm. So is there, like, a competition there? Like, how does it feel <laughs> like when you guys run into each other? No, um, it's funny. Well, um, our show in the haves, we shoot um, separate times. Okay. But we shoot at the same time with... Um, for better or worse? With, uh, not for better or worse, but um, Love Thy Neighbor. Okay. okay. And and not, it's it, it's a it, it's even like a it's just an extended family like really you know we all still kind of you know sometimes we'll go out together and party together and uh, and even back here in L A we'll uh, you know be like hey I'm going to this thing you want to yeah. come with me at the you know the, this event so yeah we all get there's there's no no competition it's like really feels like an extended family a big, yeah, big yeah. Of family. okay yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, we all get along really well <laughs> and even the ones of us who who haven't met like in the haves and have not some of them. I've only met like it during parties or something, and mm-hmm. it, it's still like, hey, hey, I know you. Get over here. You, have, I don't <laughs> actually know you, but you know, you, you feel like that you do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. 
your character, I, I feel like I'm like going a little hard on you because I, I really like you as a person. But <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But uh, for everyone else that's watching, I'm sure they're thinking while they're watching, like, how are you in real life? Yeah. So you're torn between two women. You're a wife and a mistress. Have you ever had any similar situation like this? In real life? In real life. No. Okay. No, no. no that's, <laughs> I, just, I had that as a fan. You ain't got to lie, Craig. You ain't got to lie. I believe you. You know, oh, tell me about this. No, no, no. Uh, no, Randall, is that's, that's a, he's a whole nother, that's a whole nother world now. My, uh, I don't think I could be involved in trying to, first of all, juggle something like that. Yeah. Just, it's just, that's terrible. He does terrible things yeah, to people. Yeah, that's another job. No, nah, yeah, that's, that's a, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you if you want to be done with one relationship, be done with it yeah. and move on. So you're, you're not into open marriages. I know some people in Hollywood are. Yeah, yeah um, I've never been married, so I guess, okay. but I don't imagine that that would be something I'd be okay. interested in. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, that's it. Right. <laughs> I'm not married, so I can't, I can't say I can't speak for anyone else and what they would do. Got it. Yeah. So outside of acting, like, what are some of your hobbies that you know help keep you balanced in Hollywood? Um, you know, I um, like I like to stay active. I like to hit the gym. That's mm -hmm. one thing. You know, pretty much you know, every day or you know five six times a week, I'll try try to be in the gym. Try to get some type of physical activity, you know, hiking, everything. Oh, good. You're running canyon and things oh, like Runyon's that. Oh, running your favorite. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I, I like running, but there's some, uh, um, you know, Fryman Canyon. There's I really a, like yeah, Fryman. Yeah, I've right, heard you know. those ones. Yeah, it's, there's it's a lot peaceful. of cool ones like that. Um, I just like to stay active and just, uh, like you were saying with the Halloween, I've been seeing so many haunted houses <laughs> lately. Just, uh, I don't Here, know. We gotta, we gotta go to one. It's good. We gotta go to the house. Here. You only got two <laughs> more days. You guys can go to one. Right. But yeah, no, I just like to, you know, just kind of. Go out, you know, try, try to go yeah. to the beach since I mean it's right here. Yeah, you know, it's twenty minutes away. So you know, I just like to enjoy California since I'm out here. Yeah, Good. yeah. And then, what's one thing that you feel like you haven't accomplished yet as an actor that you still want to? Because you've done so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, but you, yeah, there's still so much more to do. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I would, I'd like to do some more film. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel, I feel like I've done a good amount of TV. Um, um, but yeah, I'd like to do some more film. I'd like to um. I really want to be able to use my, um, you know, like my acting as a platform, really to, uh, I don't know, create different social justice or, mm -hmm. or you know, or just ways for people to, you know, look into, um, I don't know, ways that help with 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 like in, in their community, uh, philanthropy yeah, and exactly, things like philanthropic that. Yeah. opportunities, you know. So that's really what I'd, what I'd like to do. All right. a plat use a platform. Well, Good. I'm pretty sure all the ladies out there want to know: Are you dating? <laughs> I just say, <laughs> Are you dating? Not Doctor Holmes. He said he's Holmes, not married. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll date around, but yeah, yeah, no one, no one, no one special, no okay. one specifics right now. No. All right. So, what are some of your top qualities that you look for? Yeah. Um, Name three. three. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I like uh, you know, someone wearing a you know a white shirt, maybe a gray sweater. Over the top. Uh, we, 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 her name he, head, head, you, headphones, you know, oh, I really man. find very attractive. You She's scared of like uh, <laughs> Headphones are <laughs> scared of more scary, scary, you know. <laughs> okay. Real scary. I think, uh, I, can, I, think I can find a person like that for you, actually. <laughs> Let me go no, on my just, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, uh, you know, honestly, I want someone, someone fun, someone yeah. fun yeah. and funny, because I like to joke around, and uh, even though I'm not, <laughs> if I'm that funny, but someone who laughs anyway. Yeah. You know, yeah. make me feel like I'm funny. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, so, yeah, well, you know, someone yeah, with a good, good personality, like uh, you know, keeps keeps up with themselves. I like mm -hmm. to go to the gym. You know, maybe maybe they like to go to the gym. Maybe not, but I don't know. Yeah. Just a healthy lifestyle. Just a healthy lifestyle. Just a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So. All well, right. you know, just like you, you took a leap of faith and you moved out to L.A. to, you know, follow your dreams. And a lot of people in, you know, Hollywood are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure somebody's feeling discouraged and they want to go back home. So what's that one piece of advice you would give to somebody, you know, that's trying to pursue acting? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great question. Yeah. yeah, you know, I mean, I would say, uh, I mean, there's always going to be a lot of naysayers out there. Mm -hmm. And there's always going to be a lot of, you know, naysaying in your own mind, you know. Um, I think you know if this is if this is your path, yeah. you know, if this is your journey. And if if you're dedicated to it, and this is all you want to do. Um, if if you don't, and you're just you just kind of want to do it, maybe you still kind of want to be a lawyer, you still want to be a psychologist. Then hey, you know, go ahead and see what that path is like. But if you yeah. know that this is what you want to do, then nothing can stop you. And yeah. and, and, it, and it's not. It, it very well may not happen overnight. It rarely does. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, you know. I've been in the business. You know. Over over ten years. Just, just you know in L. A. And um, you know things are things are starting to to take off. So. Um, you know, it should be, be be persistent and consistent. Yeah. You know, um, again, try new things and just make a life for yourself. 
You know, it can't just you can't just be waiting like, oh man, I haven't I haven't booked that big thing yet. I haven't booked it yet. You know, you, you live live your life because mm-hmm. you're you're gonna miss out on a whole bunch of life if you're mm-hmm. just yeah. focused on this one thing. You know, you got to find uh, love and friendships and just a good community around you is really important. Yeah, you know. Um, also, uh, you know, I'm spiritual and I'm Christian and um, keeping that keeping that focus uh, it keeps it keeps you grounded and you know what's important in life you know and who, who's got you so all right yeah. say that okay before we get out of get out of here we have to shout out our wonderful sponsors that keep black hollywood live running DraftKings is actually our newest sponsor yeah. for everybody that does play fantasy football because i am not all the way there with it <laughs> <laughs> um your season-long fantasy football may be going strong but you don't have to wait until 16 weeks to get paid <laughs> put your fantasy skills to the test every week in season at draftkings.com so head over there now um it's america's favorite one week fantasy football site mm-hmm. and um it's oh my goodness um <laughs> if you have an injured player no problem it's like a new season every week so you're never stuck with the same players and get this DraftKings is coming with a new millionaire every week so Come on. All right. I need, need to, to jump get on. in that. Right. I need to jump on it now. Um, and you can turn your love for football into a life-changing payday. I'm with that, so maybe I need to get yes. on it. Okay. Um, and, you, and you pick your players, pile up the points, and pick your cash. That's it. Believe me, you're never going to experience football like this. It's fantasy, but come on, you're getting paid. Mm-hmm. Okay, so hurry over to king.com um, and use our promo code BLACK to play for a free shot at a $1 million for um, in this week's Million Dollar Maker event. Um, again, that's black that's our promo use it they keep all of our lights on so i would say support (laughs) DraftKings fantasy football all right so before we get out of here i would love to talk to you guys a little bit longer but we're gonna go (sighs) ahead before we leave what's your one piece of advice that you would give to anyone just as not randall (laughs) as as elfany what's one piece of advice that you would give anyone any of your fans that are watching before we get out of here one piece of advice. Um, always bet on black. I don't know. What are we always doing? bet on black? I don't know. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Do you have a motto? Do you have a, a mantra? <laughs> no. Something. Oh, it's good. What's that was your, hilarious. What is your motto? You can't What's leave fans like that. What's the good? Goose is good for the gander? I don't know. I'm just um, <laughs> one piece of advice. Everybody that's uh, tweeting you. Just imp- <laughs> for everyone that's yeah. tweeting you, if they're tweeting you good, positive things, crazy things, what's your uh, one thing that you want to say to them watching? Because they are watching. Yeah, right? I mean, I would just say, like I mean, like I've said, you know, live a he- healthy lifestyle. You know, okay. it's most important. You got you to gotta love and you got you know, be open to love because, I mean, there's just so many great things out there, great people, and you just got to uh, know yourself. Don't let people get you down because, uh, you know, other people and there's negative things going on. Yeah. Media and different things that that'll get you down. But you got to know what your purpose is, what your goals are, mm-hmm. and, and and persevere. You got to shine, you know. Persevere and shine. Yeah. All right. Well, where can That's your right fans down. keep yeah. in touch with you if you have some new fans that are watching? Yeah, um, you can follow me on Twitter at El- at Eltony Williams or um, the same at Eltony Williams E L T O N Y Williams um, for um, Instagram as well. Wonderful. Where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at it's me J Hart. That's I T S M E J H A R T. <laughs> oh, no, right. I just right. got like free like he, a he rapper. Did. Right. <laughs> I, like, uh, I did. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would rap mine, cool. but you guys can keep in touch. <laughs> with, no, no, no. I'm really bad. Uh, keep in touch with me at Tesnos on Twitter and Instagram, and use our hashtag BHL next to let us know what you thought about this episode. We'll see you guys all next week. All right. Peace. Thank you. Bye. From executives Kevin Undergaro, Dario Christie, Tiana Hobson, and the entire BHL staff, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us. Info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us, or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I am the official voice of Black Hollywood Live, Scipio. Instagram me, at KingXOBay. Thanks for tuning in. Hollywood Redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals.